Do you ever wonder what it would be like to see the world through your horse's eyes? To go through a day and be able to understand how your horse really thinks and how he perceives the world. As humans, we love to try to guess what our horses are thinking and feeling. And while science has certainly given us more of an understanding about how horses think and how they learn, we'll probably never truly understand what it's really like to go through life as a horse. But what I wanna talk about in today's video is the idea of how we're starting to measure both intelligence and cognition. So when we ask the question of, you know, how smart is a horse and how, how do they really learn, there's kind of a newer way of thinking about this. So when we talk about cognition, that just means how an individual thinks and how they understand the world. When we talk about intelligence, it's a little bit harder to define. It's how, how smart are they? But what's happening is we used to measure all of individuals, both people and also animals, by kind of this standard linear approach. But now we're starting to recognize that there's multiple different ways that an individual can be intelligent. So let's go inside and I'll explain this a little bit further. I feel that a really important part of relating well to animals, especially our horses, is understanding that they do see the world differently than us. They do learn differently than us, but it doesn't make them any less intelligent. So it's really fascinating to think about we can have the same the same behavior, the same action that a person or a horse or even a dog can learn to do, but we get there through a different cognitive process. So here's what I mean. If you think about opening a gate latch, so we've probably all either seen or maybe watched little videos or heard stories of horses or dogs that have learned to open latches and let themselves out of their pens or their pastures. And it's always a question, how did they learn to do that? Like, do we have a really smart, uh, cunning, like human-like animal that was able to figure it out? Or are they getting there through a different mental process? So here's what scientists have found to happen in the different times that scientists have looked at this situation. So humans learn to open a gate latch usually by understanding the process. So we understand that the gate needs to open in order for us to get through the space. And to do that, we can look at the latch. We have this understanding from prior learning of you know, the workings of gravity that we lift this and we pull this and it's going to come undone. So that's how we get there. That's how we learn to open a gate latch. And that's why we're so good at going to all kinds of different latches, and most of us can figure out how to open it pretty quickly. But a horse gets there through a different process. A horse usually learns to open a gate through trial and error learning. So oftentimes the ones that learn to do this are more the curious types, and they're probably kind of messing with everything that is in their environment. And when they're messing with the latch and it moves a little bit, they get some reinforcement for being able to move it. And eventually, it just happens that the thing opens enough that the gate falls open. And now they've just gotten a big reinforcement from that freedom of the gate opening. So the next time they're confined, they're going to go back there and they're going to start messing with that latch again. And this time, it might happen even more quickly that it accidentally comes undone. And again, the big reinforcement of getting loose. Well, with some trial and error, they can start to figure out what the quickest process is to getting that gate open. So, you know, if it's lift this, and then I nudge on this, and it opens up, they can learn that. Sometimes they can learn it really quickly, but it's through trial and error learning. It's not through a cognitive process of understanding how latches work. However, something that was also really interesting that they found observing dogs is that dogs, just like horses, can learn to open latches through trial and error. However, if a dog watches someone else open a latch, another dog that has been trained to do it, or even a person, they're going to learn to do it more quickly. And I have a feeling that the same might be true for horses, even though I'm not aware of any actual studies that have proven that. 
So why I gave this little example is just to, again, help you understand that we can do the same things, but a lot of times we might have a different kind of cognitive process around it. However, it doesn't make them less smart. Because as I mentioned when we were outside, we used to have this more linear approach to measuring intelligence. And it was usually measuring it to kind of the human ideal. If you think of a standard IQ test that usually asks different questions um, that requires some abstract thinking, some logic, problem solving skills, maybe some mathematical abilities. So we have IQ tests that would just kind of uh, you know, measure people on basically a range of you know, better is up here and worse is down here. So you're smarter if you're at this end and you're dumber if you're at that end. So we tend to hold animals to the same kind of scale. So if an animal isn't able to figure something out through abstract thinking, we tend to think that eh, they're probably not that smart. However, it's really not true because intelligence can come in a number of different forms. So for example, Someone can be, or an individual can be very um, empathetic. So they can have intelligence in the sense that they're really good at sensing other individuals. And I think horses tend to be very empathetic. They can really sense the emotion of another horse, of another person. Also, we have social intelligence. So this could be learning through social modeling. This could be uh, just an ability to really relate well to others socially. And then there's memory. This is another one that actually horses tend to be pretty strong in, uh, especially in long-term memory. Navigation. This is a great example for showing the, the different intelligence of, um, of a horse. It's kind of that classic story of being out on a trail ride, getting lost, and just dropping the reins and letting the horse find their way home. Because as a, uh, as a general rule, horses tend to have more navigational intelligence than a human does. And then we have visual intelligence. This is the ability to uh, kind of see and remember pictures. We could have mathematical intelligence. We could have creativity. So now we're starting to think about intelligence instead of just a linear, you're smarter or you're dumber approach. Intelligence is more of a profile. And this is true for individuals, even in people. I mean, we all know some people that are extremely good at math and maybe have more social challenges or vice versa. People that maybe struggle with traditional learning or um, you know, remembering things, but they're extremely good socially and you know, maybe they're a very empathetic person or a very creative person. But we can also apply the idea of intelligence profiles to our horses too both kind of broad thinking about our horses and also to individual horses. They all have their own strengths and all have ways that they are intelligent. So I wanted to talk about this topic today for our blog video because for one, I just find it very fascinating to think about how um, how we perceive the world so differently and we only have our own human experience, but even relating to different people, relating to our horses, our dog or our cat, or even our hamster at home. Um, we all have such different experiences really as we're going through this life, but if we can appreciate the intelligence that each can bring to the table, I think it can be really interesting and it can really enrich our human experience. So I hope you enjoy this. I would love to hear your thoughts. Go to crktrainingblog.com. That's where the best conversation happens. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe so that I can send you all the new videos. Thanks again.